राम से मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे धूमधाम से मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे सरसार स्वामी ने श्री निर्मल माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे सरसार स्वामी ने श्री निर्मल माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे गाएंगे नाचेंगे निर्मल माँ कुरी जाएंगे गाएंगे नाचेंगे निर्मल माँ कुरी जाएंगे धूमधाम से मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे धूमधाम से मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे शहर में साल वे परिवार में चिंदवाड़ा शहर में साल वे परिवार में एक देव कन्या का उन्नीस सौ तेईस में जन्म हुआ आदि शक्ति की इस भूमि पर मानव रूप में जन्म हुआ आदि शक्ति की इस भूमि पर मानव रूप में जन्म हुआ मानव के उत्थान और जग कल्याण के लिए निर्मल माँ का जन्म हुआ निर्मल माँ का जन्म हुआ निर्मल माँ का जन्म हुआ धूमधाम से मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे धूमधाम से मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे मानव के शक्ति सदियों से सोई हुई हर एक मानव के शक्ति सदियों से सोई हुई कुंडलिनी शक्ति को श्री माने जगा दिया भक्तों को नया जन्म देकर सहज योगी बना दिया भक्तों को नया जन्म देकर सहज योगी बना दिया आज का ये मंगलमय दिन कलयुग में है पावन दिन निर्मल माँ का जन्म हुआ निर्मल माँ का जन्म हुआ निर्मल माँ का जन्म हुआ धूमधाम से मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे धूमधाम से मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे सहजी का कर्तव्य है श्री माँ को खुश रखना हर सहजी का कर्तव्य है श्री माँ को खुश रखना बात ये सरल बड़ी प्रचार प्रसार करके जाना परम चैतन्य से सबको जोड़ते जाना परम चैतन्य से सबको जोड़ते जाना निर्मल माँ का सपना को पूरा करना है निर्मल माँ का जन्म हुआ निर्मल माँ का जन्म हुआ निर्मल माँ का जन्म हुआ धूमधाम से मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे धूमधाम से मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे सहस्रार स्वामी ने श्री निर्मल माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे सहस्रार स्वामी ने श्री निर्मल माँ का जन्म दिन 
मनाएंगे गाएंगे नाचेंगे निर्मल माँ कुर जाएंगे गाएंगे नाचेंगे निर्मल माँ कुर जाएंगे धूमधाम से मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म से मनाएंगे धूमधाम से मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे माँ का जन्म दिन मनाएंगे Good morning to all. Salutations to our mother doing the Namaskar, Kundalini, and Collective Panda. आप प्रसूत लगाओ मुझे Shri Ganesha, please let us to be close to a lotus feet of our Divine Mother. And clear our Sahasrara. Let's put both hands to the Mother Earth. And we are going to say the Sri Ganesha Mantra, asking Sri Ganesha, please establish the innocence, the purity in the whole world. Om Tvameva Sachat Shri Ganesha Sachat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha Shri Mataji, please fill our, fill our life in bhakti, complete devotion.
Now let's put both hands on our laps. If you want, close your eyes, but pay attention at the Sahasrara and relax. So you can feel the Kundalini ascending in the spinal cord. to the Sahasrara. With complete attention, let's say the mantra of the Sahasrara. Tvameva sashat Shri Mahalasmi Mahasaraspati Mahakali Trigunadmika Kundalini sashat Shri Adishakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha Om Dwame Vasashat Shri Kalki Sashat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha Om Dwame Vasashat Shri Kalki Sashat Shri Sahasrara Swamini Mosha Pradayini Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha Let's say thank you Shri Mataji for giving us the opportunity to have this collective meditation today. Salutations to our Divine Mother in her throne at the Saharara Chakra. Saying from our hearts, Mother, please give us full humility. And establish inside us the Dharma. That can penetrate into our lives. All together, let's say the Ganesha Tarpa Chercha to increase the powers of Muladhara Chakra, innocence, humility, wisdom inside us.
Om Namaste Ganapataye Tuameva Pratyasham Tatuamasi Tuameva Kevalam Kartasi Tuameva Kevalam Dartasi Tuameva Kevalam Artasi Tuameva Sarvam Kalpidam Brahmasi Tuam Sachat Atmasinitiam Ritam Vashmi Satyam Vashmi Ava Tuamam Ava Vaktaram Ava Shutaram Ava Tataram Ava Tataram Ava Nushanam Ava Shishyam Ava Pushatat Ava Purastat Ava Taratat Ava Darshinatat Ava Shurbatat Ava Taratat Sarvatumam Pahi Pahi Samantat Tuam Ban Mayas Tuam Shin Mayaha Tuam Ananda Mayas Tuam Brahma Mayaham Tuam Sachit Ananda Vitiyosi Tuam Pratyasham Brahma Si Tuam Gyana Mayo Vingyana Mayo Si Sarvam Yagadidam Tuatu Yayate Sarvam Yagadidam Tuastastis Tatihi Sarvam Yagadidam Tuajilayame Shati Sarvam Yagadidam Tuaji Prajeti Tuam Bumi Rapo Nalo Nilo Navaham Tuam Shadpari Papadani Tuam Guna Trayatita Tuam Deha Trayatita Tuam Kala Trayatita Tuam Muladara Shitio Sinitiam Tuam Shakti Trayamaka Tuam Yogino Yayantinitiam Tuam Brahma, Tuam Vishnu, Tuam Rudras, Tuam Indras, Tuam Agnis, Tuam Bajus, Tuam Suryas, Tuam Chandramas, Tuam Brahma Pur Bubaswaram, Ganadin Purva Musharya, Barnadin Tadanam Taram, Anus para tara tara ardendu la sitan tarena rutan etataba manus parupam kakara purparupam akaro manjamarupam anus para shantiarupam binduru tararupam nada sandama sahita sandihi Saisha Ganesha Vija, Kanaka Rishihi, Nirri Kayatri Shandaha, Ganapati Vata, Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha, Ekadantaya Vimahe, Bakratundaya Dimahe, Tano Danti Prashodayat, Ekadantan Charturhastam, Pasham Ankushadarinam, Radam Shabaradam, Astair Pipranam, Mukachat Payam, Raktan Lambodaram, Shurpa Karnakan, Rakta Vasasam, Rakta Gantanu Liptangan, Rakta Puspahi Supujitam, Tanu Kampinam, Devan Yaga Karana Mashutam, Avir Putansha Shriyato Prakitehe Purusha Param, 
evan ya ya ti yo ni tian sa yugi yugi nam barajo namo brata pataye namo gana pataye namaha pramata pataye namaste astu lambo daraya e kadantaya vignana shine shiva sutaya Shri Bharata Murtaye Namo Namaha Sasha Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Deve Namo Namaha Let's keep both hands, relax on our laps. And the attention at the top of the head. See to yourself. I want to grow deeper and deeper. Now, receiving and absorbing the message of our Divine Mother in her form of the Adi Shakti. Let's say thank you, Madre, Mother, for coming to our collective meditation today in the form of the Adi Shakti. Today, we have come here to do the Adi Shakti Puja. I have already told you about the Adi Shakti, how she had to work out so many things in this world. First to create and then to create human beings through evolutionary process. After that, to comfort them. Then to counsel them. So many people came on this earth just to do the counseling. They told what was wrong, wrong, what was right, what should we do, what we should not do, what is self-respect and what is the <coughs> duty of a human being as the superior most creature. So many of them came. One after another, in every country, they came. And their counseling formed religions. Of course, you see the mess of the religions. And that's how their life was wasted. That they formed religions after religions, by which only human beings were divided. Divided to such an extent, they hate each other. If somebody is born in an ex religion, he hates the person who follows the Y religion. Why those who came as counselors? 
talked about complete unity, complete oneness of human race. Despite that, human brain in its freedom did all kinds of wrong things and created a country, or we can say the whole world, full of lots of problems arising out of religion. How can it be that religion makes you hate somebody? Religion is there to understand love, to imbibe love and compassion. So the third thing one had to do is the Adi Shakti's job. That is the one Kundalini within us. And by her awakening we got pure knowledge, absolute knowledge. Pure knowledge that it cannot be challenged. Absolutity. Whatever you know after realization is absolute. If you know that, then what you have to understand that everything has to be united. You cannot have fights and you cannot hate anyone. If that thing starts happening, all the problems of the world will be finished. So the first thing, redemption, that is the quality of the Adi Shakti, was to redeem people of their all wrong ideas about others. Firstly, as we know, there are six enemies we have got. And unless and until we can conquer those six enemies, we cannot be a religious person. That's what it is said. But actually the all religions are based only on prospering those six enemies that we have within ourselves. When you see this clearly, you start seeking. You start seeking, seeking uh, earnestly the truth. And the revelation of truth, absolute truth can only come through your evolution, through your reformation, that you become person who knows the truth. For that, Adi Shakti's ascent is important within you, which is your Kundalini. And when this thing takes place, automatically you drop all those six enemies that you have. You become a beautiful human being. Like lotus, when it is in the very germinating state, it looks like all other small animals or small you can say very, very small, dirty things that are in the pot. And then when it starts coming out, coming out of that horrible water, it becomes such a beautiful flower, rises up and opens out. In the same way as Sir Yogi, Though lives along with all these horrible things that are going on, but flowers like a lotus. It doesn't have all these insects, all this dirt and filth of that water in which it lives. It sucks only the pure water and the, remain, the others remain there as it is. 
So what is left within you is nothing but purity, beauty and fragrance, just like a lotus. Then there is no more the problem of getting attacked by all the, these small, small creatures in the water or all the dirty things that are in the water. And this state that you have achieved now, I'm very happy to see so many people in America have achieved it, which is a very great blessing because America is the leading country in so many ways. One can say that it has made lots of money. That is not the criteria for becoming a very good surgery. What you get is the satisfaction. Satisfaction that you enjoy, whatever you have, and whatever others have. And the second thing that happens to you, you become absolutely collective. This has to happen. But I find still people have not understood the meaning of collectivity. For example, family is very, very weak here. Family. Uh, that is being created by natural relationships is not so much respected as it should have. It's all because based on money, so people start quarreling, fighting, even killing each other. Now the basis of family is love and compassion. Those who do not have this cannot have good families. I have seen even among Sahaja sometimes, some people who are working for money, who are educated, sometimes look down upon people who are not so well off. Or maybe the housewives who are working in the house, looking after the children, building up the families are not treated with respect as some secretary to the some organization. I don't know why this kind of a manliness comes into women. Why should they think they are something higher than the women who are working hard in the household, cooking, looking after children, wearing all the brunt of the society. This is something I feel is a part which is lacking very much in America and also Western countries. When money becomes important, if when money is important, then the <coughs> Lakshmi principle is not respected. Very surprising. Money is the part or we should say blessing of the Lakshmi. But the Graha Lakshmi, the one who is a householder, is not respected. And with this, I tell you, it's a very, very wrong thing can happen. You can work, you can be educated, but you should be able to look after your family and look after their comfort and look after their unity. Instead of that, educated women, I call them manly women, educated women think that they are something higher, they are sadly mistaken. In no way a man is higher than a woman. So this kind of a disparity that exists and one starts thinking that we are earning, we are educated, are really manly women, I must say. But the women who work very hard in the household with love, look after the children, look after the family, 
are in no way less than these people who are working in the office. So such women must be respected by their husbands, by the men, males of the family, not only that, but all the surgeries must respect such women who are doing such a difficult task. I have been a housewife and I know what it is to run the house, to look after the children, to look after the complete organization and looking after the expenditure of the money if that is limited. This ego has to go. The other day one lady, she came as an interview and asked me that how is it in this world of men you are so much respected. World of men, I was really laughing. What makes them think that this is the world of men, I can't understand. Can they exist without women? But I was amazed at her question because she said that even in the jail, criminals have so much respect for it. How is it possible? How can they have so much respect for a woman? I said, I can't understand. One thing, that criminals have got mothers or not? All males, don't they have a mother? They all have a mother and they respect the mother. That's the point one should know that woman is a much more important thing than the man is as far as the children are concerned. But I've seen even some ladies who think they are very capable, try to control it and create problems. A mother's job is not to control. Her job is to love, to give compassion. And this is the quality of women is lost in this Western so-called advanced country. It's a very dangerous thing, I personally think, that if such a thing happens, families will be destroyed. Nobody will have uh, respect for the lady who looks after the family. And she is more than a prime minister, I would say, in a family, and she is to be respected and to be understood. Today, I think it's important to say that all of you should understand the value of women who are housewives. It's a tremendous job to be a housewife. I have gone through it and I know what it is. The respect to the housewife is not given. She would <coughs> also look after the children. Children are tomorrow's citizens. Who will groom them? Who will bring them up? All these manly women don't also have children sometimes, so they don't know what is the problem of children. At least those who are solving the problem of sin. Children, you must understand their responsibility. This is a very, very crucial point, I think, on which all the Western societies are collapsing because in their culture there is no place for the mother. So the women should not feel in any way less if they are mothers and looking after the household. They should not feel inferior to anybody who thinks that they are something great. Basically, the families have to be improved. This collectivity must work first in the family. The children are to be groomed properly. They are to be brought up in a proper way. As it is in this day, you know what is happening to the children. When I read about it, I'm really shocked that Children are just treated as if they are some unwanted stuff. They are not given any attention. Ultimately, the children become drug addicts, they become vagabonds, anything. They can become anything because there's so much 
so much neglect and so much of hatred for children. So one has to first remember that for collectivity you must look after your children. Not only that, <coughs> with love and compassion, not uh, as somebody who is trying to become a despot out of it, but a person who is a source, who is a source of joy and compassion. In one of my lectures, I talked to you about the emotional intelligence. That is what we should try to imbibe. Emotional intelligence. That means the intelligence that is based on emotions. Unless and until we become emotionally intelligent, our society cannot do. With an emotional intelligence, you care and you enjoy caring. You do everything for others with a great emotional understanding. Not for one child, not for one son, but for everyone you have to be emotionally intelligent. Some children are born like this, but some are to be made like that, that they should be emotionally intelligent. Because if the mother and father are money-oriented, very selfish, they won't allow their child to give anything to others. So such a child will grow into a very funny type of a person and will never do anything for anybody, not even for his own country. Why should he do it? Everything for selfishness. Then such people indulge into corruption, indulge into all kinds of things which are only selfish in attitude. Now we are talking of collectivity. In collectivity we do for others. We enjoy doing for others. We love giving things to others, not for our yourself, because your children will also become the same kind and they'll only bother about themselves. This emotional intelligence has to be brought in our life, in our pattern that we have. Are we emotionally intelligent or we are just intelligent or emotional. Both things are wrong. If you are just intelligent, you can become a very dry person. You may just uh, have few friends, maybe you may not have, and you will always try to preserve yourself away from the collectivity. And if you are emotional, you will be attached only to one person attached to one child, maybe, attached to one person, to someone, even in the society. For no rhyme and reason. Why? Why are you attached to one person? Why are you bothered about one person? Only. All such people fall into such terrible prey. In the politics we have seen how people try to help their own sons and our daughters and this and that, and we Indians have suffered a lot with this kind of a emotional attachment. So according to <coughs> ethics, emotional intelligence is the highest quality by which you give to others. You care for others, for everyone, and you become very, very collected. Now exclusiveness is another fashion that's very much that it's exclusive, because you don't want to be one of the multitudes, you want to be exclusive. 
You should be exclusive in emotional intelligence, not on other things. That is the best thing you can have. As I agree, I am just a woman, I'm just a mother. But what I have is really the emotional intelligence, ocean of it. And from that I know about everyone. I understand about everyone. And all this work has been done because of that quality in my head. I'm not attached to one person or to one style. Whatever you say, I can understand because I'm at a level where I can understand everything that you are doing. To achieve that, you try to develop emotional intelligence. Here the children won't even give a toy to somebody to play. Even the mother is like that, the father is like that, extremely selfish. And we must have our own, you say, everything should be our own. This has to go. This has to go from American, especially because they are the leading nation in this kind of selfishness. What selfishness they have done, I did not count, but you know that. You go and ask the people of Canada, Mexico, Peru, all this, they will tell you. Being selfish, they are not ashamed. Being exploiters, they are not ashamed. Nobody can even tell them because they think they are very rich people. But all these riches will not give him the joy of life. Joy of life is only in the emotional intelligence. If you don't have that, it becomes very dry, life becomes very unbearable, horrible, and even the family gets broken up. If there is no emotional intelligence in the family. I have known so many women who have had three marriages, five marriages, I don't know how they can do it, but they have done, because this lack of emotional intelligence. It is something that is a sense of giving. It is not that you are sacrificing anything, no. That's also another idea, that we have to bear these, nothing of the kind. Look at the life of Christ, He gave His life. Why? What was the need for Him to do that? Behind it was the truth. When you have truth with you, the light of the truth, the force of the truth, the strength of the truth, you become emotionally intelligent. Sacha Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha. Let's put the right hand in our central heart. Mother, you are in my heart. Please come to my heart. Let me clean my heart. So that you are there. Put your feet into my heart. Let your feet be worshipped in my heart. Let 
Let me not be in delusions. Take me away from illusions. Keep me in reality. Take away the sheen of superficiality. Let me enjoy your feet in my heart. Let me see your feet in my heart. Let's fill our hearts with the self-respect, joy, compassion, love, and light. Let's put our right hand in our forehead and say, I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. Mother, please absorb my ego and super ego. Let me be free from ego and super ego. Keep us connected with the Adi Shakti in our brain. Shri Mataji, please come to my heart and into my brain, into my mind. Shri Mataji, please come to my heart and into my mind. Shri Mataji, please. Come to my heart and into my mind. Let's feel the vibration at the Saharshara. Let's keep our Sahasrara open. Full of vibrations. Recognizing the mother in our heart. When we recognize the mother, all the vibrations are flowing in our Sahasrara. Shri Adi Shakti, you are the giver of the state of Nirvishara. the state of thoughtless awareness. Let's say the mantra to Sri Nirvishar. Om Tuame Vasashat Sri Nirvishara Sashat 
श्री आदि शक्ति माता जी श्री निर्मला देवी नमो नम to establish complete reconnection. Let's go to the state of complete surrender. Saying the mantra to Sri Nirvikalpa. Om Tuame Vasashat Sri Nirvikalpa Sashat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha with the full attention at the Sahasrara. Let's go to be united. In this collective meditation, we can conquer the six enemies within us. that we all together become a better and collective Sahaja Yogis to lead the world. In this global meditation, we can lead the world. Put both hands in your laps, into your laps. Pointing to Sri Mataji's photograph. And we can feel the lotus, open lotus at the top of the head. Shri Adishakti, please give us emotional intelligence. With the attention inside, let's have three minutes meditating in silence with the divine breath.
eleven rudras <coughs> are awakened, and they will destroy all that is negative.
Thank you to Sri Mataji for letting us assemble here today, for improving us, having this collective meditation. The surrender to our Divine Mother. Thank you to everybody for coming today. We hope to see you tomorrow. Now, with all respect and devotion, a salutation to Sri Mataji doing the Namaskar, collective pandan and rice kundalini. Jai Sri Mataji all.